morning, friends and members of the Episcopal Churches in Osney. My name is Cooper Conway. I am the priest in charge at the churches, and I am welcoming you to this morning's service of morning prayer. The hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. And now in silence, let us humbly confess our sins against Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the, in the beginning, beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another. And one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them is your servant enlightened. And in keeping them there is great re reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound, and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and, and to, to the, the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading for this morning is from Exodus 20. God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother, so that the days may be long in the land of the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male, or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and the lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at the distance and said to Moses, You speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. This is the word of God. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths, in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Jesus was 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he released it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent out other slaves, more than the first, and they, they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this, his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they re regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There's an old joke about Moses and God's people in the wilderness. It seems that after Moses had gone up the mountain once and come back down to find the people worshiping a golden calf, he broke the, the commandments, which were graven on stone. And later he decided to go back up and to talk to God and get those commandments again. Well. The second time he got them, he came back down holding the commandments and he was pleased to see that the people were standing down there waiting for him patiently. And so he said to them, I have good news and I have bad news. Oh, says they? Yes, he says, the good news is I've gotten him down to 10 commandments. The bad news is the sixth commandment is still there. Well, so what is the sixth commandment? Thou shalt not commit adultery, of course. But wait, it depends on who you ask. <laughs> In the Roman Catholic Church and some Lutheran churches, the sixth commandment will be thou shalt not commit adultery. But in the Jewish community and more Bible-based Protestant churches, including ours. The sixth commandment is, thou shalt not commit murder. And the seventh is about adultery. So why is this? It's because the various traditions divide and number the words of Moses differently in this Sinai passage. Both traditions accept that God is the single, all-powerful deity who is not to be supplanted by another. But in one tradition, the prohibition against graven images is seen as a separate, standing alone commandment. That makes it the second commandment. While in the other tradition, that graven image mandate is considered a modifier which explains how important allegiance to a single God will be. 
So in other words, even in the most basic ideas of the Judeo-Christian tradition, we human beings can find something to quibble about. And what exactly is the meaning of the word quibble? Well, the online dictionary says this, to quibble is to evade the truth of a point by raising irrelevant objections. To evade the truth of a point by raising irrelevant objections. But let's talk about the Sinai moment here for a while and God's laws themselves. First of all, the laws of Moses are not standalone fiats. They were given to God's chosen people in the middle of a story, and they need to be understood as part of that story. The story began when Moses, led by God, led the people through, out of Egypt and into the wilderness. They were guided by a pillar of fire at night and a pillar of cloud by day. They became hungry and God fed them. They became thirsty and God gave them water. Now, in the very middle of their trip through the wilderness, the people are feeling lost and cut off from God and they are quibbling with one another and turning to other gods for comfort. But at this point, God gives them the law. Something much like a compass, a tool they can use to guide themselves. It's a set of laws designed to make their common life harmonious to make their dealings with each other fair and predictable, and their individual lives more spacious. Because the law which God gives them is relational. It helps the people to build relationships with God and with each other. God's Sinai law provides a framework a reference to be consulted in interpersonal matters. It's a base they can stand on when negotiating with one another. So the Ten Commandments then are a tool given to God's chosen and humanity in order to prevent quibbling or self-isolation when facing interactions with others. In fact, the commandments are like finger posts pointing toward reason and God's love. So what happens when we quibble with one another? Well, according to the pastoral letter called Titus, the writer says, avoid foolish controversies genealogies, dissensions, quarrels about the law, and we avoid these because they are all unprofitable and worthless. So in this quote, we learn that quibbling with each other is a destructive waste of time. And as for quibbling with God, well, that is both destructive and isolating. Just think of Jonah. At the start of the book, God points Jonah in one direction and Jonah goes in the opposite direction. Then God finds Jonah in the belly of the whale and he sends him to prophesy to the, the city which Jonah is avoiding. And once Jonah does this and succeeds, he blames God for making him do something that he didn't want to do. And I ask you, how did this quibbling prophet end up? Do you remember? He ends up alone in the sun, despairing and wishing for what he sees as the escape of death. 
So according to these scriptures, quibbling is counterproductive, isolating, unprofitable, and worthless. You know, this week I read an article in the Atlantic Magazine by George Packer, a staff writer. In it, he highlighted the three most recent crises which our nation has faced. 9-11, the financial crisis of 2008, and our current pandemic with its attendant revelations of injustice. Then, Packer talked about how we as a nation have faced these challenges differently. At 9-11, he said the whole country rallied in support of New York City. Our disaster was seen as an attack on the entire nation. In 2008, our legislators in DC were able to come together in a bipartisan effort to put together a solution which saved the financial system. But, he says, they overlooked individuals. So both the middle class and the poor faced increasing inequity and its resulting sense of anger. And today, Packer points out, we greet the hardship of this time as a nation divided rich against poor, Republican against Democrat, Anglophone against immigrant, white against black. And so we find ourselves frozen and reduced to quibbling. But all is not lost. We can stop quibbling. We can listen to our better angels. From the secular viewpoint, George Packer says it this way, and I'm going to read to you from the magazine. We can stay hunkered down, he says, in self-isolation, fearing and shunning one another, letting our common bond wear away to nothing. Or, we can use this pause in our normal lives to pay attention to the hospital workers holding up cell phones so their patients can say goodbye to loved ones, to the plane load of medical workers flying from Atlanta to help in New York, to the aerospace workers in Massachusetts demanding that their factory be converted to ventilator production, to the residents of Milwaukee, braving endless waits, hail, and contagion to vote in an election. We can learn from these dreadful days that stupidity and injustice are lethal and that in democracy, being a citizen is essential work. Now, we also have the perspective of the better angels of the church and St. Paul. And by them, we are offered this vision. If I speak in the tongue of men and angels, but have not love, I am a ringing gong or a clanging cymbal. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no account of wrongs. Love takes no pleasure in evil but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things hopes all things, endures all things. Love never dies.
You know, these days it is possible to hear this and think, oh, I know a couple of people who could use this passage. But the passage is not for them. It is for us. Someone once said, be the change you would like to see. So my friends, it's time for us to end our part in the quibbling and to appropriate the way of love, both secular and sacred. Let's look at the big picture and remember the tools we've been given, the 10 common and reasonable commandments, the example of service that so many have shown us these days, and the impulse to love which God has put in our hearts. Also, you know, we are together here in these sister parishes, not in a protected little circle, but in a community of reason and love which the world needs very much. I hope we can give thanks for that and for all the things which God has given us. And also to let us allow their blessings, the blessings which God has showered on us, to be our guide in the months going forward. Amen. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God commands us to love one another. In baptism, we promise to seek and serve Christ in all people and to strive for justice and peace. Let us now honor those vows and pray for our nation in this election year. For wise and just leaders and for the needs of all the nations of the world. We pray for continued blessings on peacemakers, on leaders who value peace, and on all who promote nonviolent solutions to conflict. God of peace and gentleness, hear our prayer. We pray for the strength of heart and mind to look beyond ourselves and address the needs of our brothers and sisters. We pray for the rural and urban poor, and for an end to the cycles of violence that threaten our world. God of generosity and compassion, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations that they may live in unity, peace, and concord, and that all people may know justice and enjoy the freedom that only God can give. God of liberty and freedom, Hear our prayer. We pray for an end to the growing disparity between the rich and poor, and for the grace and courage to strive for economic justice. God of all gifts and blessings. Hear our prayer. We pray for an end to prejudice throughout our country, that we may respect all people as precious children of God both in our hearts and under the law. God of fellowship and equality, hear our prayer. We pray for a reverence of creation, that we may have the tools and the will to conserve and share it, and that we may become better stewards of the earth. God of nature and the universe, hear our prayer. We pray for all immigrants, refugees, and pilgrims from around the world, that we may welcome them and treat them with fairness, dignity, and respect. God of justice and hope, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the aged, the infirmed, and the disabled that all may have access to proper health care. God of comfort and healing, hear our prayer. We pray for all prisoners and captives that a spirit of forgiveness may replace vengeance and retribution. God of absolution and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our, all children and families and particularly for the orphaned, neglected, abused, and those who live in fear of violence or disease, that they may be relieved and protected. God of children and families, hear our prayer. We pray for the reconciliation of all people and for the church throughout the world that it may be an instrument of your healing love. God of outreach and restoration, 
Hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died as a result of violence, war, disease, or famine. God, save us from hardness of heart. God of eternal life and resurrecting love, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Watch over our country now and in the days ahead. Guide our leaders and all who will vote, and make your ways known among all people. In the passion of debate, give us a quiet spirit and a courageous heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives, that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour out upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things which our conscience is afraid of, and giving us those things for which we are not worthy to ask. Except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Almighty God, you, you have, have given, given us grace, grace at, at this time, time with, with one accord to make, make our common supplication, supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.